Good afternoon, my fellow scientists. It is Monday, June 12th, 2017. For all the new viewers out there, I have been building a series of designs for a DIY all iron battery. The idea is that whatever reason you might want to store some energy, either because you have some solar panels and you want to store up the energy during the day to use at night, or because you're just interested in how batteries work and want to try one yourself, it would be nice to have something that was cheap, buildable at home, non-toxic, and really, really simple. Doing this with iron makes sense because iron is cheap and non-toxic, and if we use all iron chemistry, the whole battery can be really, really simple. So I've been through ah, three, four different designs, none of which were really awesome. This weekend was no exception. I built a battery that was not awesome. <laughs> The notion for this battery was to build three layers, an anode layer, a separator layer, and a cathode layer, and then sandwich those together. But assembling them separately turned out to be a really big problem. Getting them glued together without leaking, another big problem. Better would be to make it out of something squishy and then press them together to keep leaks to a minimum, but I don't have the patience or material to do that efficiently. So instead, I moved to a plastic vial, a 50 mil conical vial, filled the bottom with graphite and iron three salt. I'll put a link in the description to the actual recipe. Over that I poured some gel as the separator and in the top I put some iron and salt. The whole thing oh, and connected the graphite to the top of the thing using some insulated copper wire. Now the copper wire may corrode. That's one of the reasons I wanted to assemble this this way. There's not a lot of copper in it, and if copper is going to be corroded, I'll be able to tell after a few cycles of this battery. So, plugged it in. It's been running for many hours now at about 5 milliamps, and it seems to be holding a very significant quantity of energy compared to my previous cells, which were measurable, but not significant. So we're making progress. Um, one issue is at the current recipe for iron EDTA, we're still making hydrogen and we need to avoid that. So a couple more steps, but I think with this design, I could assemble half a dozen cells and put them in a rack and actually get a appreciable voltage for something like a lamp or an LED. So hopefully we can do a demonstration for YouTube of a functional battery put to a task here soon. In the meantime, kind of thing. Tune in Monday through Friday for more science, DIY projects, chemistry here in the Allen.